Good morning, and welcome to our service. Sandra is away. If there are any emergencies or you need to get in touch with the minister, you can contact Judy Lancaster at 613-838-2520 or at muchurch at belnet.ca. Please enjoy the service. God of grace, be present with us as we gather to worship. Calm our minds and hearts during this worship time so that we may hear you speak to each one of us. We light this candle as a symbol of your love. Let us pray. Great God, we come this morning entering your gates with thanksgiving and praise. We know that you are with us and you know all that we carry in our hearts. You are the God of our lived experience and our experience of you has taught us that you walk beside us and you will never forsake us. We trust you because your covenant with us is the covenant of our ancestors. And this morning, we are keenly aware of your spirit speaking to us. Help us to hear you as you show us the way to follow the teachings of Jesus. Show us the work we must do and reveal to us the path we must follow. Enlighten and empower us to share the good news of your love and compassion with all people we meet. Enlighten and enable our congregations to be the source of welcome and acceptance of all people who come seeking refuge from a troubled world. You are the God of all that is good, and there is nothing impossible for you. And by faith, that faith, we enter into your gates with thanksgiving and into your courts with praise. Hear our prayer that we offer now in the name of Jesus, who called us to say, Our Father, which art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. And so it is.
called Children Make a Difference. My name is Nathan, and today I will be sharing with you what I learned about Ryan Hickman. In 2012, when Ryan was only three, he went with his dad to the local recycling center in California. Even at such a young age, he knew recycling is important for the environment. Ryan and his dad started a little business called Ryan's Recycling Company and began collecting recycling from neighbors, family, and friends. They would walk around the neighborhood and do pickups to get as much recycling as possible. Ryan's business grew and grew, and when he was six, he went viral. Since then, he has appeared on television shows and other media outlets inspiring others. Ryan now shares his love of the environment with people from all over the world. Ryan says he wants everyone, especially kids out there, to know that even the smallest act makes a difference. Eight million tons of plastic end up on in the ocean each year, and so if you see a piece of trash on the ground, pick it up, even if it's not yours. Ryan says you could be saving an animal's life. You can find out more about Ryan at ryansrecycling.com. Ryan Hickman has a message for kids everywhere. He says you can make a difference. Our scripture reading is from the book of Genesis, chapter 21. The Lord dealt with Sarah as he had said, and the Lord did for Sarah as he had promised. Sarah conceived and bore Abraham a son in his old age, at the time of which God had spoken to him. Abraham gave the name Isaac to his son, whom Sarah had bore him. The child grew and was weaned, and Abraham made a great feast on the day that Isaac was weaned. But Sarah saw the son of Hagar, the Egyptian, whom she had borne to Abraham, playing with her son, Isaac. So he said to Abraham, Cast out this slave woman with her son, for the son of this slave woman shall not inherit along with my son Isaac. The matter was very distressing to Abraham on account of his son. But God said to Abraham, 
Do not be distressed because of the boy and because of your slave woman. Whatever Sarah says to you, do as she tells you. For it is through Isaac that offspring shall be named after you. As for the son of the slave woman, I will make a nation of him also, because he is your offspring. So Abraham rose early in the morning and took bread and a skin of water and gave it to Hagar, putting it on her shoulder along with the child and sent her away. And she departed and wandered about the wilderness of Beersheba. When the water in the skin was gone, she cast the child under one of the bushes. Then she went and sat down opposite him a good way off, about the distance of a bow shot. For he, she said, Do not let me look on the death of the child. And as she sat opposite him, she lifted up her voice and wept. And God heard the voice of the boy, and the angel of God called to Hagar from heaven and said to her, What troubles you, Hagar? Do not be afraid, for God has heard the voice of the boy where he is. Come, lift up the boy, and hold him fast with your hand, for I will make a great nation of him. Then God opened her eyes, and she saw a well of water. She went and filled the skin with water and gave the boy a drink. God was with the boy, and he grew up. He lived in the wilderness and became an expert with the bow. He lived in the wilderness of Paran, and his mother got a wife for him from the land of Egypt. Let us pray. May the words of my mouth and the meditations of all of our hearts always be aligned with your love, O God. You are our rock and our redeemer. Amen. The Bible is full of dramatic stories. And I believe that is why Hollywood always taps into it to get ideas. Today's story is one of the best dramas in our scriptures, and it has fascinated and confounded people over the centuries. In our story, God made a covenant with Abraham, and the promise was that Abraham was going to be the father of many nations. But time passes and Abraham and Sarah, well into their late 80s, are still without child. So Sarah takes matters into her own hands and hatches a plan. She decides that Hagar, her Egyptian slave, would bear a child for her with Abraham. Hagar immediately gets pregnant, but Sarah is not pleased. Sarah had hoped that she could bring up Hagar's child and merit God's blessing that way. You see, back then status for women came through marriage, but higher status came through childbearing. And even though Sarah plans to bring up the child and merit God's blessing, she knows what the town gossip will be, and she can't get past it. Genesis 16 says, When Hagar saw that she had conceived, she looked with contempt on Sarah. Tensions start to mount with not only Sarah and Hagar, but with Sarah and Abraham as well. And after an argument, Abraham tells Sarah, Your slave girl is in your power. Do to her as you please. Then Sarah dealt harshly with her, and Hagar ran away. I know at this point in the story I'm rooting for Hagar, and I'm saying, run, Hagar, run. Don't look back. But in our story, an angel of the Lord appears to Hagar and says to her, return to Sarah and submit to her. Really? Go back and be abused? The angel promises Hagar if she does go back, God will multiply her offspring. Sounds like a bribe to me. Anyhow, back she goes. And I wonder if she goes back because she has no other choice. No home, no money, no food banks, no health care. So what is a single mother to do? From our scripture reading this morning in Genesis 21, we know it does not go well for Hagar when she does go back. Sarah finally conceives at 90, which, let's face it, really stretches our imagination. And finally, the golden son Isaac is born to Sarah. And once again, her disdain for Hagar and Hagar's son Ishmael are apparent. Sarah says to Abraham, cast out this slave woman and her son, for the son of this slave woman shall not inherit along with my son Isaac. 
Abraham, one of the richest men on earth, reluctantly rises early in the morning, gives Hagar a bit of food and water, and sends her and Ishmael into the wilderness. Once again, Hagar, whose name means one who seeks refuge, is alone with her son in the wilderness, wandering for days. At this point in the story, we can't help but think of the millions of exploited and abused refugees in our world. The desert is so hot and with a young boy along, it doesn't take long for the mother and son to run out of food and water. As the days go by, Hagar watches the energy drain from Ishmael. His skin becomes parched and dry from the sun and his emaciated body is trembling. He can't go on, and so Hagar puts him under a bush. She doesn't want her anguish cries to distress him, so she sits far enough away so he can't hear her. This brings to mind all the children and youth that are separated from their parents and put in refugee camps. They can't hear each other cry. Hagar, in a deep state of confusion, grief, and dread, falls to the ground in a heap and weeps uncontrollably. And then she hears it. She hears the Spirit of God speaking to her, saying, Don't be afraid, for I've heard the voice of the boy. Come, lift him up and hold him fast with your hand. Hagar, a woman of deep faith, puts her trust in God. She gets up and turns and sees a well of water and immediately gives water to Ishmael to drink. Our story ends by saying that God was with the boy. He grew up and his mother got him a wife from the land of Egypt. This story leaves me with a lot of questions. What was wrong with Abraham that he sent his own son away? He was so rich, why didn't he give Hagar more provisions? Why did God send Hagar back to Sarah to be abused? I know I will never get the answers to my many questions, but I can take something from this story, and this is what I take away. As old as this story is, it is still our story. We still have refugees detained in camps all over the world. There are Hagars and Ishmaels everywhere. Nearly half of all refugees are children, and almost one in three children living outside their country of birth is a refugee. Hagar, in her despair, heard the Spirit of God calling to her not to give up, and she believed that help would come in some way. Jesus was a refugee, and so this story challenges us as followers of Jesus. It challenges us to hear the cries of the children of refugees. It challenges us to hear the cries of Hagar and Ishmael. It calls us to be the Spirit of God, creating wells of living water for them. The refugees of today are counting on us to say, Don't be afraid, for we have heard the voice of the boy. Amen.
Let us pray. Gracious God, as we leave here today, may we acknowledge that you are the God of all good things. May we leave here promising to fulfill our covenant with you. And may we have respect for the earth, peace in our hearts for all people. And may we have love and delight in that which is good. We pray for all those with responsibility for our churches and our communities during this time of uncertainty. And we petition you now for all who are still affected by this virus, for our government that at times seems to be in turmoil and inundated with greed. There is a weariness and a sense of unease in our atmosphere. People are certainly worried about food, housing, child care, and job insecurity, while vast amounts of money from the labor of the poor seems to be squandered. And just like Ishmael all around the world, children are displaced and afraid. We are surrounded by those who say they follow the teachings of Jesus, yet are determined to put up barriers between people, barriers that Jesus tore down so long ago. Yet despite all of this, O oh God, we know your presence is with us, calling us to be ready for what comes next. And we are grateful that there is a sense that change is in the air. And we acknowledge that things can never go back to what they were. We give you thanks that your compassion is all around us as we work to build your kingdom come on earth. And we see the love of neighbor in the healthcare professional, in the teachers who work so hard to continue educating our children through this pandemic and in those who carry food to those who are elderly, sick, and shut in. And we can say we know the plans that you have for us are plans to give us hope and a future where all people are treated with dignity and respect. And now, O oh God, we just take a moment of silence to offer up to you the prayers of our own heart. Gracious God, hear us as we offer these prayers up to you. Amen. And so it is.
today and every day may you travel toward the place God desires for you. May you walk in the company of Jesus who knew the way. And may you go now in peace and with God's spirit of love and compassion. Amen.